Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. Today I have six tips in total for you for easier MIDI note editing in Studio One that you hopefully find helpful. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first tip I have for you is something that I've been reiterating quite a few times in the past few weeks because it's a preference that should be set by default in my opinion and that many, especially new users, aren't aware of yet and that is chase long notes. So what am I talking about here? Well, let's say that you're editing a couple of chord progressions here in Studio One. Then you probably noticed already, if you tried this yourself, that when you stop playback in the middle of the notes, then you won't hear anything, right? And that can be quite annoying because now you always have to jump back to the start point of the note in order to hear it. And sometimes you just don't want that. You just want to, you know, audition quickly from the middle section and then hear the following call right after. So to make that easier for yourself, you just go to Studio One up here to the preferences. And then under advanced and MIDI, you should find chase long notes. Make sure that is ticked. And as soon as that's ticked, you can just hit OK here. And now you can always just stop playback from the middle of the notes and you will still hear the chords. Super useful. The next tip I have for you guys is scales. So if you're working with specific scales in your song, like in my case, it's currently D natural minor, then it's very useful to just tick this scale box right here and you'll see that the notes that are part of the selected scale are now highlighted in blue here on the piano roll. And you can also see that the notes are now highlighted in gray here on the note grid. So every note that is with black background in this case would be not part of my scale that I currently have selected and all the notes in gray would be part of that scale. Also when I move notes you see that I can now only move them within the scale grid, which is very useful. And so whenever you're working in specific scales, this just makes your workflow a whole lot easier. The next tip has to do with this feature, but also with another feature that I'm going to talk about next. So that would be the modifier keys for MIDI note editing. So for example, here on the bass, I've created this bass line with one of my favorite modifier key combinations, and that is command and option. When you hold this down, then you can distribute notes across the note grid by just dragging to the right. And the value will be whatever you have set as your note length right here. So if I had this set to an eighth note, now I would distribute eighth notes across the grid with the quantization that's set right here. So if I want like eighth notes distributed in an eighth rhythm, then I can set quantize to 1 8 here and the length to 1 8 and now I can just distribute notes across the note grid like so. And you'll notice that this also follows the selected scale. So this is a quick way to immediately insert a bass line that would be in perfect harmony with everything else that you have going on. So in my case, I'm just going to go with quantize 1 16th and note length 1 16th, distribute notes just randomly and it will naturally fit. Right? Super cool. But there's also other modifier key combinations that you can use. For example, if you hold down command or it would be control on Windows on an empty field, now you can switch to the paint tool and quickly insert notes this way. And if you hold down command while you are on a note, you actually get the eraser tool to quickly remove them. If you hold down Command or Control on Windows together with Option, which would be Alt on Windows, you can quickly adjust the velocity of notes, which is also useful to know. And if you do Command and Shift or Control and Shift on Windows while holding your mouse on a note, then you can actually split it. Now, an easier way that allows you to do most of these keyboard shortcuts without having to learn all the modifier combinations is the MIDI Smart Tool. And that can be activated right here. So if you click on this arrow tool, once again, you have the option between the extended tool and the basic note editing tool. When the extended tool is active and you are on the maximum vertical height for notes, then holding the mouse to the top right end of a note, like here, will allow you to adjust the velocity really quickly. If you go to the bottom area, you can split the note conveniently. 
So that is a faster way to edit notes if you want that behavior. But if you find that you sometimes, uh, you know, split notes by accident, then you can always switch back to the basic behavior like so. The next feature I want to show you is ghost copies, something that I really enjoy in Studio One. I have an entire video about that if you want to check it out. But if you want to have a quick summary, this basically allows you to duplicate any part in your arrangement and then any changes that you make in either of the copies is going to be mirrored automatically on the other one. So for example, let's assume that this would be the chorus section of my song and I want to copy and paste everything over to my other chorus and want to make sure they're always mirrored, then I could just drag and drop these notes and then usually I would hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows to duplicate them. I can hold down Command on the Mac instead of Option or Control on Windows instead of Alt. And now you can already see that in brackets it says shared copy before I let go. And now you also see this ghost symbol here that's indicating that there's a ghost copy event and all changes will be mirrored on the original copy as well and vice versa. So for example, here on the base, we can see these are the notes of part two. And as soon as I select them, the previous notes get selected as well because once again, all changes will be mirrored. And if I now delete these notes, you could see same thing happens here. If I add notes, the same thing is going to happen on this copy as well. So they're always in sync, which is really cool if you want to have certain instrument parts to be identical in separate song sections. The last thing that I want to show you today is the note editing macros. And those really make your life so much easier in certain situations. So you find the macros when you click on this macro toolbar right here. That's this icon in the note editor. And then using the inspector, or the page index navigator if you want to go to either the music creation or the music editing page. They come by default with Studio One. Of course, you can also create your very own note editing macro pages if you'd like. And there you just find a ton of commands that could be useful in all kinds of situations. For example, if I only want to select the downbeats of my baseline, then I can go to the filter field here to select and then to downbeat. Now only the downbeats of my baseline are selected and I can transpose them, adjust the velocity or do whatever else I need to do on them. Or if I go to tempo, I can half the tempo of my baseline or double the tempo with just one click. And if I would do this manually, this would take me a whole lot longer. So for most note editing commands, there's probably a macro in there that's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Definitely check it out. And hopefully one of these tips has been helpful for you. Thank you for watching.